Richie, how does it feel to be in Australia? When did you arrive? Um, I think it was Wednesday morning, so um, it was a long flight, but um, you know, delighted to be here and, and, and hopefully start start performing on that pitch soon. And what are you hoping to get out of your, your, your time down here? Uh, just want to play football again and you know enjoying it and obviously I know what the gaffer um, expects from from his players and that um, so really I just want to you know want to graft again and, and do well for the team. What do you know about the league? What do you know about your teammates so far? Yeah you know I've been out there a couple of couple of training sessions and that um, obviously they, they do show the games over in the UK as well so I watch some of them um, but yeah it just it looks like a great league to play in to be fair so I'm really excited to, uh, to get started. Did the um, experience of Ross McCormack last year help you come out? I mean, he came out and scored a bag of goals, not too dissimilar position to you where he left. Um, no, no, two different positions really. So, but obviously, I spoke to Ross before I came out here, and uh, he really enjoyed his time here. And but I mean, I, I, you know, I didn't need him to to convince me to come out here. So, can we can you? Can you both sort of explain the first time we met each other? Because I understand you know, you know each other. Now. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not well, to be fair, he was a he was a young kid at Antwerp. You know that um, sixteen years of age. You know there was a couple of them that really didn't get paid very much. Came on a bike every day to training. But you know, I, I obviously I've been working at, at elite level at Manchester United, and you're looking at talented young kids and and Rich and Kevin Bart. I thought with two 16 year olds who fitted into to that, being elite talented players. Um, he got his chance in, in Belgium to play, you know, a debut in a, in a local derby really against Mechelen, so high pressure game. And at the time there was a lot of Man United players there. Um, his, his move to England came pretty quick because there was, there was people watching Ryan Shawcross and you know, they, 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 they wanted to sign Shawcross, Stoke City, and, and probably Richie was doing as well as Shawcross and, and they signed him from Antwerp as well. So, you, you know, you've followed his development for a long time, really, you know, starting as a 16 year old. And what do you remember about that? Richie is a 16 year old riding your bike to, <laughs> to the club. Uh, yeah, well, riding the bike was nothing new, but um, yeah, just coming in and getting a chance with the first team, really, um, because obviously I had to mix, mix school with, with football at that time, which was difficult sometimes but obviously Did you go to school sometimes yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um, obviously the gaffer gave me my chance and um, you know training with the first team lads over there was completely different for me as well um, coming from from the reserves in evening trainings all of a sudden going to daytime trainings and it was it was you know pretty pretty obvious and you know it got to me really quick that all the gaffer really wanted from you is to give a hundred percent out on the training pitch every day and um, you know, I like to think that I try to I try to do that um, every day, and then obviously when the chance came against Michela, um, tried to grab it with both hands, and you know I think I played every game after that in the playoffs as well. So. And so, how old were you when you debuted? Uh, Seventeen, I think. Okay. And when did the move to United happen? I'm guessing while you were instrumental in that. Well, it was at Stoke, and, and and obviously we were back at United. I mean, it was a different type of a transfer that in the. Um, we kind of at United there was always a conveyor belt of players that you pushing out on loan when they're 18, 19 now we did it regardless of whether the reserve team was going to suffer we did it what was right for the kids so lads would go out but you could leave yourself short in the positions there was an opportunity to bring Richie to the club um, that we discussed with the manager to help teams out really and, and you know secretly I always thought he could Playing for Man United's first team, and it turned out to be true. Um, it was sold to the manager on a different deal to try and help, and we'd help other players develop, and 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 obviously, you know, think you could end up selling him to a Championship club at least. But he came, grabbed the opportunity to play at Man United with both hands, played in the first team, and and obviously ends up winning the league at, at Leicester as well. So, you know, you can give people opportunities, but they've got to grasp it and make the most of it themselves and be prepared to work, you know, hard every single day to, to improve and get better. And and really the same challenge has been thrown to him here as a 29-year-old. You know, that, that's, that, that's how you've sold the club to him. Warren, what do you think Richie will bring to uh, Melbourne City? I, I think obviously the versatility in, in a salary cap league is, is vital. You know, I think the last game people were 
questioning me and saying, well, what, what signings you going to make? You, you need some players there, don't you? And you need some players there, and you need some players there. You know, that was the, the press conference and, and you were bang on right, you know, because you know we've got some talented young players, but we need cover in certain positions that, you know, that Richie offers, you know, cover in a, in a variety of roles. Richie is alone here. A lot of people will see you as a big capture for a league of this standard. I mean, how's the um, pressure for you? How are you saying that at the moment? How do you think you'll cope with it? No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I don't feel any pressure just yet. Um, and I just want to play football. And, you know, the football over in the UK is still 11 people on the pitch either side and, and a ball in the middle of it. And, and I'm sure it's the same over here. So, I, I, really, I just want to get going now. Um, you know, I've been here, been here nearly a week and I just want to get going and get out there on the, on, on the pitch and stop performing. It's a, club, it's a club that never won the league. You were part of that side with Leicester City a couple of seasons ago that you know, did what no one thought would ever happen. Um, envisage yourself winning a, a trophy here at this club? It's never happened before. No, but I think that should be should be the aim. You know, I've seen some of the players out there and, and like the gap said, some of the young players and there's some real quality in this team. and. I'm sure once um, once we get it all together and that um, we're going to make a real good push for it. And you're ready to go tomorrow night. Sorry. You're ready to go tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm you know just about over the jet lag now, so um, you know get a good session into me today, and then well you know whatever the gaffer decides to do tomorrow, then um, but yeah, I'm ready. You gonna pick him tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> this is how we do things. In <laughs> <laughs> Wait and see. <laughs> Do you think you'll use Richie mostly as a, as a right back this season? I know you've said about his flexibility, I don't really hear that, but is right back the sort of standard position? Or? Um, listen, I, I'm, I know what he'll give in a variety of positions, you know, so you're comfortable in playing him in a whole range of positions because he's played centre half in the Premier League, he's played right back in the Premier League, he's played left back, he can play in midfield, he can play wide. You know, he, even in a reserve game, he scored hat trick and won the league for us. In, in a vital game, playing up front. So I know what he can give us, you know, like, like I say, the versatility is key in a, in a salary cap league, I think. Do you think you've now assembled a squad that's capable of winning the A League? Um, time will tell on that one. You know, you, you, you're happy with the signings we've made. We've got some good young players as well competing for places. You know, so at the minute, all the squad's having a go. You know, there's some lads coming at different times, fitness-wise, over the, the pre-season that, you know, there's still a way to go in a build-up to, to October at the start. You know, so you want everybody fighting for places, getting everybody that we can choose from everybody at their best. And and then you've got that competition. And not all you look at is winning every every game that's put in front of us. And, you know, you, that, that's the only way to approach it, really. You can't look at the long end of the season before the start. Anything can happen in this league, you know, as it showed even in the playoffs at the back end of last season. But if you perhaps looked at your squad this time versus this time last year, would you say you're more confident or less confident about, I guess, silverware? Um, y you don't think about silverware at this stage of the season. You're just looking at winning, you know, the game tomorrow night for a start. And, you know, you just focus on that, you know, and you did that last year, you know, there was nothing... Some of the lads who were here last year and some of the lads who were left put in a hell of a shift for the club and did a, a really good job, you know, so no complaints about some of them. You know, the lads here, the aim is to do better than we did last year, so that's the pressure and demand on all the players and that's that's what we'll be drilling into them every day, you know, in training, you know, to improve on, on last season. But there's no, no criticisms of the players last year. There were some good players, some good lads, some good characters. You know that you can't keep everybody at the football club the way the salary cap league is. You, you just can't do it. And you know, good luck to some of them. You know, in their careers somewhere else. And the ones that we've got here have got to work hard to see if we can go better than we did last year. When we spoke to you last, I think you said there were, uh, you couldn't see more than two players coming in, and obviously you brought um, the French guy and, and Richie, and the switch switch keepers as well in that time. So, so are you done, or is there a potential for? It, no, that that's. There's no more spaces. That's done. And I just wanted to ask you, Richie, just obviously the, the Premier League winners medal is the big thing on your CV. What are, you, what are your memories of that amazing season? Um, well, it was a crazy season um, because I st started probably the first nine games of that season and then um, got dropped for 
I don't know what reason, but I um, came on a couple more games, but then January came and I wasn't really getting involved anymore. I was sitting on the bench and I wasn't happy with sitting on the bench. So um, I went to see uh, Claudio, um, knocked on his door and I said I wanted to play. And he's like, well, you're going you're gonna to have to be, you know, patient and sit on the bench and hopefully a chance will come. But I wasn't happy with that. So I decided to go on loan to, to Middlesbrough um, in January. And... Um, you know, we we got promotion there as well. Um, so it was it was a weird a weird season because you know, obviously the the Leicester one was the real big push towards the end of the season. I wasn't I wasn't there, so I didn't really you know feel what the lads were feeling. And then the Middlesbrough one was was a weird one as well because I wasn't there at the start. So you know, I I, I won two things in that season, but didn't really feel a part of both of them. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> It Double is, winner. It's a funny story, isn't it? I mean, is it bittersweet? <laughs> do, you, do you look back with, I don't know, how do you look back on it now? Um, no, nah, I look back as a proud moment in my career. I mean, you know, I've got Premier League winner's medal uh, at home. So, um, and I'd like to think that I contributed in the first 12 to 13 games or so um, that I did play in. So, um, no, nah, it's something that I'm proud of. You said you've watched a bit of the league so far. What have you made of it? No, it looks, yeah, it looks, um, there's some real quality, there's some real technical players um, and um, obviously the the pace of it looks quite quite similar to the UK one really. Um, obviously I haven't played in, in the heat that will come in the coming, uh, in the coming months and that but, you know, it looks, it looks like a competitive league. Richie, we touched on Ross McCormick earlier on, um, you always shed any light on that situation at all, it seems to be a little bit unwanted. All I can say is that he's a hard-working player. Um, I'm sure the gaffer will agree with that when he was here. Um, and from what I've seen in pre-season as well at Villa, he's been he's been putting a shift in. So I think it's just one of those um, unlucky moments. Just looking back on how he played here last season, he actually did really well. And there's sort of a bit of talk that he could be coming back to the alley for the Central Coast. I mean, do you think that'd be a good move for him? Listen, Villa. The Villa's a big club. The the, the manager there who's gone in has had to look after a lot of players that may be signed by another manager as well and it's a difficult situation to manage that. You know, so you can look at players and think, you know, there's a lot and how's that and is he in the plans or not? Only eleven players can play, you know, and he's inherited a situation where a few different managers signed a lot of players. So there's bound to be. But but the flip side of that is us getting players from the you know, you wouldn't be able to get them players if that wasn't the environment because you're getting it after the deadlines over in England, you know. So it helps. It's helped us that situation. You know, they're they're in a situation where he's managing through a situation where there's loads of players in the football club, you know, and a lot of them not not signed by himself as well. You wouldn't mind seeing him back in Australia, though. Yeah, Bross did a good good job for the club, wasn't he? You know, here so you know, good luck to him where where every. You know, goals and, and the same here. You can only sign so many players, can't you? So, you know, it's good. It'd be good to see him in the league. How's Bruno going? Um, he sort of had an interrupted season last year with injury. How's he fitting into? Uh, well, obviously, he scored two worldy goals. You know, there's still demands on him to get. You know, to you know, the demand for me is him being at the best he's ever been in his his career. You know, that that's the aim. That's been the talk from coming back at the start of pre season. You know, and he wants to work towards that, so that's that's what we're we're aiming for him. But I said the same to Richie as well. You know, you whatever you've done in your career is great, but it's it's gone now. You know, whatever's happened yesterday, it's what happens tomorrow, and then the next week, and and the next week for for all players at the football club, whatever age they are. Do you feel Bruno is in through his best form at the moment? Uh, he's got to work towards that. Yeah, I think he's you know in a decent place at the minute but you know you don't want to ever set, settle for doing enough you know any player just in terms last one for me just in terms of tomorrow night who is unavailable who's, who's injured or Malik's injured okay um, and we've got a couple of players that we don't know whether the registration is going to be through or not okay and Richie would be one of those yeah